This video focuses on one of the more troubling topics that some students find difficult, mainly because they see the name protocol and just get worried and nervous. So hopefully this video helps you to understand the different network protocols that you need for the exam. A protocol is a set of rules for how devices communicate and how data is transmitted across a network. If you think that people in Japan are speaking a completely different language to people in Russia and people in the United States and people in Sweden and people in Italy and so on. Computers don't care what country you're in, they still need to be able to communicate with each other. So that's why we have protocols. Protocols are a set of rules that each machine is going to follow on the network. They decide how communication between two devices should start and end. They decide how data is organized and they fix things when data goes missing. Now, networks and protocols need IP addresses and MAC addresses to be able to tell which different devices they need to communicate with. Now, a MAC address is a unique identifier so that a device can be found on the network. MAC addresses are assigned to every single device that you buy that you can stick onto a network. For example, every mobile phone, every tablet, every laptop and computer will all have their own MAC address. They are unique to that device and you cannot change them. MAC addresses are either 48 or 64 bit binary numbers. These get converted into hexadecimals to make them easier to read and remember. Now, with MAC addresses, what you will find is that the first three sets of digits are the same for all manufacturers. And the second half are unique to the different models and devices for that manufacturer. These MAC addresses are mainly used by the Ethernet protocol on a local area network. A LAN switch, which we've looked at in the hardware video, these read the MAC addresses and use them to direct the data to the correct devices on a network. Unlike a MAC address, an IP address can be assigned to anything really that's connected to the internet. An IP address is used when sending data between networks over the internet. Unlike a MAC address, they aren't linked to a specific hardware device. These IP addresses are assigned either automatically or manually before a device can actually access the network. An IP address used to be 32-bit binary number, which would be converted into four binary numbers as shown in the example at the bottom. So what you see on the right-hand side in the corner, 37.153.62.136, that could be a pretty common um, IP address format for like a website, for example. However, due to so many digital devices coming around in the modern society, we now have to have 128-bit binary number, which is converted to eight hexable, hexadecimal numbers. This is because there's so many devices, the old format didn't have enough IP addresses for them. There's two different types of IP address. The first is static IP address. Static means that it does not move, it doesn't change. So a static IP address is a permanent address. This would usually be used for a printer on a local area network, or the best example is hosting a website on the internet, which we already looked at in the previous video. So those companies, those big companies, Facebook, YouTube, they pay big money for these um, static IP addresses so that they don't change. Dynamic IP address is when the address is assigned to the device by a network server. This means your device may have a different IP address every time you connect to the network. Internet service providers commonly use these as they are cost effective and can be reused. This is probably the most difficult and complicated section of networks is the TCP IP protocol. Now, luckily for your exam, I think you just need to know what it is, uh, what each layer does, and perhaps the advantages of using it. So TCP IP protocol is essentially 
what uh, is used to decide how data is sent between networks. So the TCP part of the protocol, transmission control, it sets the rules for how devices connect. Essentially, it splits the data that is going to be sent over the network into small packets. It's also responsible for reassembling those packets at the other end. And then it will check to see whether the data is being correctly sent and delivered. The internet part of the protocol, so the IP section, is responsible for the packet switching. Therefore, TCP is what organises all the data and the internet protocol is what sends it. So the TCP IP protocol has layers. Now a layer is a group of protocols which has similar functions. A layer is self-contained, as in it, each layer does its own job. Each layer serves the next layer, so once one layer has completed its job, it passes it on to the next layer. With the TCP IP stack of four layers, we start at the top on the green layer. Now on this layer, this is where the user is likely to interact with it. So this turns data into websites and other applications and vice versa. For example, if you're accessing a website, the application layer will be the browser. So the application layer will read the website using the HTTP protocol. If you're using an email app, for example, to send an email, you'll use the SMTP protocol on this layer. The next layer is the transport layer. So this is what controls data flow. This is where the data is split into packets and packets are made uh, sent and make sure that they're sent correctly. This is where the TCP layer is specifically used. The next layer is the network layer. Now this is what makes connections between the network. It's what creates and sets up the, the transmission and is what actually directs the packets to the correct place. This would be used by routers. The final layer is the link layer. Now this is what actually passes the data over a physical network. So this is responsible for how bits are sent as electrical signals. So essentially whether it's a wireless or wired connection. So why do we use layers in networking? The advantages of layers are that it breaks networks communication into manageable pieces. This helps a developer concentrate on their own area. In other words, someone can focus on one protocol independently of the others. Layers are self-contained. This means that one layer can be changed without affecting any of the others. For example, on the link layer, you might send um, the data through a wireless signal or a wired signal without affecting the other layers. Finally, layers set rules for each layer, which means all companies need to make them compatible. This means that we can universally set up networks no matter what country we are in and what software and hardware we are using. Let's take a look at the other protocols that are used in networking. So HTTP is really, really common. It's at the start of most URLs when you are on the internet. So HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it is used by web browsers to access any website and communicate with a web server. HTTPS is the secure version of this protocol uses SSL certificates and basically encrypts all of the information sent and received through websites. FTP is a file transfer protocol. Now this is used to access, edit, move, delete, rename files on a network. For example, uploading photos on Facebook, uh, downloading multiple files from a website. POP3 Post Office Protocol 3. This is used to retrieve emails from a server and download them onto the device. IMAP is very similar, it is used to retrieve emails, however, it does not download them onto the device. This would be used for webmail, such as Hotmail. 
Finally, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. This is used to send all emails. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. Please press like and subscribe. Thank you.